as you all know, we're in the midst of sort of unprecedented um, issues with our healthcare system, with the coronavirus, with COVID-19, and what is going to happen to hospitals, to our economy, to really our everyday life. Um, you know, I, I, at our hospital where I practice, we've actually canceled all elective cases. We have cases confirmed of COVID-19, um, as almost, uh, all, I should say, many hospitals across the country already do. Um, we're taking a lot of precautions to make sure that ICU beds and those kind of things are opened up should they be needed. Um, you may have heard very recently that New York City has closed down, for instance, restaurants for weeks, um, banned social gatherings to keep this um, social distancing in place in an effort to prevent the rapid spread of COVID-19. So there are so many things going on right now. There's a lot of question marks. There's a lot of uncertainty in um, how our country, how our really the world is dealing with what's happening and what's going to uh, continue to happen. I want to take a couple of minutes to focus on med school admissions and how this may impact uh, people who are going through the process. Now, keep in mind, uh, I think med school admissions is a relatively tiny, tiny, or not even relatively, it is the smallest thing that you should probably be worrying about right now, but I know that there's a lot of you out there who probably are worried, who are going to be applying this year or applying in a couple of years and trying to figure out how this all impacts you. And so I wanted to talk, um, I think, about a couple of things that I see as places where there's going to be a definite, definite impact and, and what that looks like. So the first impact I see. So for people who are going to be applying this year, so that means in 2020 for admission into the 2021 class, how is this going to impact you? Well, as you guys know, there's lots of travel restrictions, there's travel bans, um, schools are shutting down across the country, or not shutting down, at least shutting down their physical presence and moving to digital presence. I've heard that a lot of universities are actually, actually giving the option for pass-fail this year or for this quarter, or this semester, as people are transitioning home. So I guess one of the first questions I'll answer is, should you, as a student, um, take the opportunity to take your classes pass-fail, and what does that mean for med school admissions? Well, in the normal circumstance, pass-fail is probably not what you should do for medical school admissions. And, you know, the reality is that all your classes that you take for admissions, you know, bio, chemistry, biochem, organic, physics, etc., um, your core classes should almost always be taken for a grade. Now, this is a extreme circumstance, and who knows what's going to happen. And I think that schools are definitely going to be a lot more lenient if they see that this semester you had a grade that was pass-fail. Um, so the reality is that should you take a pass-fail, well, you should try to keep taking it for a grade. But if you are very affected by this, if you somehow feel like you're going to come out with a C in this class, then maybe, yeah, maybe it is worth taking pass-fail with the knowledge or with the assumption that schools, when they look at this quarter or this semester, years from now, or maybe even, you know, in a couple months, they're going to say, that was an anomaly, and we understand that students had all kinds of issues going on, that universities had all kinds of issues going on. So. Should you take your pass, uh, class pass-fail? The answer is if you have to, yes. If you don't have to, I would still try to take it for a grade even though you're moving to this remote learning environment. Now, another question that's coming up um, is around the MCAT and the MCAT dates and how they're going to be postponed. So right. the MCAT is um, only given certain times a year and it's given at specific testing centers throughout the year, specifically the Pearson Testing Centers. And Pearson actually sent out a um, notification a couple of days ago that I'm, I'm going to read it here. Uh, the MCAT was canceled in a few specific counties in Pennsylvania. Um, now multiple states are reducing the number of seats that are available um, to allow sort of that six feet distancing that people are saying is the key here to hopefully prevent the spread. Um, and I expect that to only get worse, which is that we're probably going to have less and less MCAT seats. So what does that mean for you as a student who's scheduled to take the MCAT? Well, hopefully if you've registered, your seat won't be canceled. But I think there's a possibility that it will be canceled. Um, 
hopefully they open up more dates and I kind of would expect the AMC to open up more dates in order to be able to accommodate that but it also it, it, they may not be able to right I mean there's a finite number of seats there's a lot of testing that needs to be done um, and it may end up being that you actually take your MCAT a lot later than you're expecting to um, and that's not ideal but again what I think is going to happen is that schools are going to understand this year that getting your application in on May 31st or June 1st with a complete application is going to be just a lot tougher to do than it has been in the past. And so I would anticipate that schools may give a little bit more time or may actually push their evaluation of applicants back a little bit in the in the year in order to give them more time um, but I'm not sure of that and so the reality is if you can take your MCAT on the date you were supposed to take it or as early as possible let's say you're scheduled in April and you can still take in April you should definitely try to do that and I wouldn't postpone it um, but if you have to if they're not giving you dates if you don't have the option to take it well um, got to do what you got to do which is you know if they don't have testing centers if you don't have dates we're gonna have to play around with it um, I wouldn't start flying across the country to go take it because you hear that you know in California there's a couple of open spots or in Arizona there's a couple of open spots you know if you live in New York City um, and there's no testing centers around you or your test gets canceled or your testing seat gets pushed back I would just roll with it, you know, take it and take it at the time that they give you or let's postpone it a couple of weeks until this hopefully cools down. That's sort of the best advice I can give. I think that schools are going to, again, be a little bit more lenient when it comes to that this year. Now, a couple other things that I think are definitely going to come up um, are going to be the restriction around traveling and how that impacts interviews, right? Interviews typically started as early as September of any given year, and while travel restrictions may certainly be lifted by that point, um, it's not a guarantee that they will be, and it's not also a guarantee that schools will necessarily want to gather a whole bunch of people at once. Actually, residencies and fellowships are going through the interview process right now, really fellowships um, are dealing with this right now, which is to say that we don't want to students and uh, even you know physicians to come here from another institution and potentially spread and potentially have to congregate and meet and all those kind of things so we're limiting interviews to essentially virtual zoom interviews uh, or Skype or whatever other medium and so I think that that's going to be a big thing that you should be prepared for which is the possibility that you're going to have to interview via Skype or zoom the in, in this upcoming year and so how do you do well in a video interview? Well, I think we should cover that on a different topic, a different video, because it's definitely going to be something that we want to talk about. There's definitely some tips on how to do better in a video interview versus an in-person interview. The good thing is that we do video interviews all the time. I mean, that med school coaches is literally what we do. We practice with students via video all day long. And so it's not something that you can't practice. In fact, it's easier to practice. Um, but you definitely want to take some different steps than maybe you would uh, with an in-person interview. So we're going to shift that to another video, but that's definitely something that I think will come up, which is virtual interviewing rather than in-person interviewing. How do you evaluate a school if you're not actually going to be there physically? Oh, that's tough. I, and, that, you know, it's not completely clear how we're going to do this. I would anticipate that schools will make open as many resources as possible, allow you to Skype with students, allow you to um, zoom in on their classes, etc. Um, when that time comes so that you can evaluate a school or maybe they can, they push that interview season back a little bit. So instead of starting in September, maybe it starts in October or December or something along those lines in order to give us more time. But we don't even know if we're going to be actually into the next cycle of COVID-19 at that point. So again, a little bit unclear how this is going to play out, but I would be prepared for a video interview. Um, I would also definitely be prepared for interview questions that are going to come up around COVID-19 and sort of the medical ethics behind it. Now, you should always be prepared for medical ethics type questions during an interview, um, but I think particularly today in this nature and what's going on, questions around Medicare for all, questions around what, um, you know, how do you parse care um, in a resource limited setting, right? So if you have a patient who's in the ICU and another patient who needs the ICU and that pa first patient who's there is 76 years old, has multiple comorbidities and likely have life expectancy only of a few more years versus a, let's say a 40 year old mom of two, um, do you kick that 76 year old out of the ICU and say, listen, we need that ventilator, we need that bed for this mom? I mean, these are big questions that will have to be answered at some point um, as we go along this 
you know, I mean, these are questions that are actually playing out on a daily basis. Certainly in Italy right now, you see these playing out. Hopefully they don't play out um, across the world, but they may, and in the United States, I mean, we may be in a situation where we do play out these questions. Now, again, these are questions that I've actually, you know, posed these ethical scenarios multiple times in the past on interviews I've done with students. Um, but now they're not so much scenarios, they're real life. And so being prepared and thinking through some of these things as a med school applicant, I think is very important. Quarantine, right? Should you be quarantining people? Like, what are the ethics behind that? Um, public health, you know, how do you, how do you deal with an outbreak like that? I, I would be prepared to ask the question. In fact, I would probably ask the question of a potential applicant. You're president for a day. How do you stop this? Or what do you think? Who do you listen to? What advice do you give? You know, I mean, those kind of things are going to come up. Um, so being familiar, I think everybody is sort of in the know right now between social media and, and news outlets, et cetera, of what's going on and kind of keeping up to date. But I do think that that's a, a good thing to do. And I would do it from a medical perspective, not just from a social media perspective, right? Like really understand what's going on and, and how you may tackle this if you were put in the situation of being able to tackle it. So listen, I mean, there's probably a whole bunch of more things that are going to be affected this application cycle and um, this summer as we move on, right? Um, summer plans. What do you do with your summer plans? How do you get clinical experience? Actually, let's talk about that for a second because a lot of people probably were scheduled in for some clinical experience, for some shadowing, for some observerships. Um, that's not gonna be able to happen right now. No hospital is gonna allow you to sort of come in and do shadowing and observerships at this juncture. So what do you do as a student um, and how do you how do you make up for that on your application? Well, I think med school admissions committees, again, are gonna be a little bit lenient this year. Um, I mean, hopefully you've had experience for the last couple of years or had opportunity later to get more experience in some of this, but Keep in mind that even a year from now, people may start limiting um, the the amount of exposure, the amount of visitors that we have coming in to hospitals. We don't want to expose people when they shouldn't be. And I think this sort of brings light to a lot of those situations. The bottom line is if you were really scheduled to get a lot of clinical experience this summer, um, you're not gonna be able to get it, right? You're not gonna be able to shadow. Um, I'm hoping that schools are a little bit more lenient on that. Again, hopefully you've had some experience in the past. You may wanna explain it in secondaries that you were scheduled to do X or Y, but didn't. But what I would do as a student is say, well, I was scheduled to do X or Y, but didn't have the opportunity to because of the COVID-19 outbreak. But here's what I did instead. You know, I, I actually, um, I actually started a group that disseminated information about COVID-19 in different languages, right? I mean, that, yeah, like that, that's powerful. Now you've done something um, and medical schools are going to see that. So listen, there's a lot of other things that are potentially going to come up as we move along. This is a very fluid situation as everybody kind of knows. Um, but let's see, let's see where things go. Your med school application, your MCAT, I know these are super important to you right now and rightfully so, right? Obviously the world is dealing with bigger issues than that. Um, but stay the course. You guys are going to be fine. The reason you're doing all this is to be in the position one day to be able to take care of patients um, who are who are in need of your help, to be able to sort of um, give back. I mean, that's why you're becoming a physician, right? Like that's that was the whole goal for you in the first place. So, a a um, situation like this almost gets you to a point where, okay, you know what? This is why I want to do this, right? This is what I want to do. This is where I was going to be the whole time. Um, so let me go ahead and let me nail that MCAT because today this proves to me even more than ever that this is what I want to do, right? You as a student are going to be put in a situation um, in the future that's going to be much harder to deal with than just your MCAT being canceled or your, you know, uh, not being able to get the clinical experience you needed this summer or having to do a virtual interview. So use those things all as an understanding that, you know, the issues you're facing right now for MCAT and admissions are minor, um, but you're going to get over them. And those are the things that are going to help you take on future problems. Healthcare now more than ever is going to need physicians, right? Um, so be that.